So welcome to Techno Day of Life and today what we have is a very big box that came that I'm very excited about because this could possibly be my new home media server but we'll see. Let's take a look. And so you can see this is actually a TerraMaster rack mount. And it, it was a return on Amazon. So we'll actually see if it actually works. If it does, we might install a different operating system on it. So let's look to see what's in this box. We have a power cord, a cable, some screws, a screwdriver, and installation instructions in German and other languages. And it looks like a warranty guide. So if we look at the back here, it was actually never unsealed. So. So if we check out the page here, so normally this sells for $7.99. I actually got it uh, for $400 for, for whatever reason. It was a return, but again, it's definitely not open. Uh, but if you're looking the same thing, so I like this because it's got a quad core, can do Plex, and right there, 10 gigabits Ethernet. So let's start playing with this and see if it is worth it. So we're gonna undo these. Oh, maybe it was open because you can pull these stickers off without actually ripping them. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually a plastic peel on this still. So no one ever took that off. So let's just take a look at this. So at the front here, we have four drive bays. Top here, we have directions and our warranty site. So in the back here, we have two USB, two one gigs and one 10 gig. And then over here, we have our power supply. Let's actually take off the top and see what's inside here. So if we look at this, we can see that we have a tiny little board here, tiny little power supply. We have our four hard drives would go here, three fans. So underneath here, we have an Intel Celeron J3455. And so let's look up to see how Plex friendly that is. So if we go over to the Intel Arc site, and we look up the J3455, we can see that it is, we can see that it was launched in 2016, 14 nanometer, 10 watt TDP. And it's Apollo Lake, Intel Graphics 500. So it should do some 4K uh, transcoding. So let's look over to Wikipedia. And so we see that Apollo Lake, yes, can do 4K transcoding, but not 10-bit or 12-bit. So we really want a Cabby Lake, probably, if we want to do 4K, consistent 4K transcoding. So if we look over the power supply here, it's 250 watts. Yeah, and I was just looking, this is interesting, this daughter board here plugs in there and then comes in. That's how we connect to the four hard drives. And it looks like this is a 
sort of sideways PCIe slot. So interesting, interesting setup. Looks like if you want to add more stuff, there's actually more power supply available there. So let's get the lid back on and power it up and see how loud it is and also uh, which operating system it has on it. I'm right now, after looking up the specs, probably I might go with something different, but let's take a look. This is actually a pretty good case design because you just have to take out the two screws and press the two buttons and then the top comes off. So. Okay, so I'm going to get some hard drives in here and then we'll start it up. So it has started up. I just have actually one hard drive in there. So we're going to let this boot for a minute or two and let's go into the settings here. Okay, so it wasn't showing up, so I went to the TerraMaster, down, or Terramaster website, downloaded this app, the TerraMaster TNAS devices, so I found one device, and then I can connect to it, and so right now it's starting initialization, and we can click start. Let's see what happens. So it's initializing the drive, so time for a cup of coffee. So we're going to do an online, oh, won't let me do an online install. So download software from Terramaster. And so we're going to do this one, this TOS installation package. Uh, so 5.0.176. And so even though 5 is the newest version, it's sort of somewhat beta, it's definitely much better than the version 4 of the TOS software. So we're going to do that. So that's finished downloading. So now we need to browse to it. And I think that is it. We're going to upload it, see what happens. Click Next. And time for some more coffee. Terra so now our TerraMaster system is installed. And so we'll just take a quick look at this and then I'll show you how you can actually install a different operating system on this and go from there. Okay, so we have our pool, we have our pool data, our disks. So we just have one disk out of four. We can set up virtual disks, expand storage, hot swap, or hot spare, and SSD caching if we have that available. So it gives us system warnings. And then let's just take a quick look at the Applicate App Store. So we have our normal sort of stuff. We do have Plex on here if you're interested in doing Plex. So the other thing that we're interested in is if we go over to All. Uh, oh. You can install Docker and Portainer. So if you want to run your own Dockers on the system, you can. If we go over to Control Panel, we can add users, create shared folders, do change our networking around, volumes, etc., etc., just like a normal NAS. So pretty comprehensive. Now, if you're like me and like tinkering, you can actually install another operating system on this. And so how you do that? So on this computer, on actually TerraMasters in general, they install the operating system to a USB drive. And so right here you can see that is, that's what it is. You just pull that out, put your installation media of choice on a second USB drive. Put that in there. Then if you're going to install to a USB drive, then put it in one of the USB drives in the back here. Uh, but if you need, uh, what I should say is if you need access to a video port, so if we take a close look, there's an HDMI port there. It's covered up by this plate, so you have to pop this out. So once you've done that, you get to install your USB drive, boot it up with a monitor attached to your HDMI, 
and a keyboard into the other USB and you can install your operating system. So in conclusion, is this worth it? And so if you're going to have a media server, uh, if you need, you have light transcoding needs, uh, this is actually a great server for that. For me, I just wonder, because there's so much room in here, uh, why they didn't actually make this shorter. Uh, so Synology and QNAP also have sort of similar servers that are actually much shorter than this one. But this is obviously at this price point, $400, which I got it, but it was used. This is the best bang for the buck that you can get today for a home NAS server or one for your office. That's it for today. You take care. Hope you have a great day. Make sure you like and subscribe. Bye-bye.